trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise and that is I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Just pray in one minute where you are. Lord, I'm tired of this level in the spirit. Just where you are. Let there be a holy agitation. Lord, I know I can rise higher than this realm. Lord, I know and I believe things can continue to be like this. There has to be a way out. The Bible says there is a path which the eyes, the eyes of the eagle has not seen. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. If my father knew better, he would have risen higher. If my mother knew better, she would have risen higher. Understandest what thou doest. Man of God, do you understand what you are doing? Businessman, do you understand what you are doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. There's such glory in this atmosphere. Your pastor said it. We'll soon find a time to round up. Let me just share with you one key. One key. For many years, we have taught that favor works automatically. We have said favor is unmerited. And I know that it comes from a well-meaning communication. But I found out it's not true. A thing can be sincere but just not true. The reason why we never experience favor is in the very definition we have received. It is not unmerited. That favor is a product of understanding. 13 and verse 15 Proverbs. Please give it to us. I will never be tired of teaching the body of Christ this. 
that there is a pregnant woman in the Bible. Her name is Understanding. That when she gives birth to a child, the name of the child is Favor. That there is also another pregnant woman in the Bible called Transgression. She can give birth to a child and the name of the child is Hardship. There is a science. There is an explanation to closed heavens. There is an explanation to a believer's life that never experiences beauty and glory. We will continue to blame God and we will continue to get agitated or we will continue to know there is a way out and remain there. Today, if you hear his voice, he said, that you harden not your heart like they did in the wilderness in the provocation. Good understanding giveth favor. It says, but the way of transgressors is hard. A transgressor is not a sinner. A transgressor is a consistent violator of God's ordinances. I can be a believer and be a transgressor. And my life continues to program a system of hardship. And I continue to ask God, why now? And other well-meaning, empathetic Nigerians just like me who say, see, life is like that. No, no. See, the greatest way to predict your future is to create it. I will give one scripture for this church, then share something. I have about 20 minutes and then we'll wrap up. One scripture the Lord gave me and then I'll give the other at the end of the service. Nehemiah chapter 9. While I sat down here, the spirit of the Lord began to speak to me. Nehemiah 9, 24 and 25. Nehemiah. This is the word of the Lord for this church in this season. And the children went in and possessed the land and subdued before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites. Please keep the scripture there if you can. The Canaanites and gave us them into their hands with their kings and the people in the land that they might do with them as they would. 25. And they took strong cities and the fat land and possessed houses full of all goods not empty they didn't possess empty spaces wells digged already vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance prepared blessings it says so they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness this was the first word the lord gave me so keep that as a word of prophecy that you are stepping into a season of prepared blessings. Was it not in the land of Samaria that by this time tomorrow, this and that will happen? And people stepped, four lepers stepped into a prepared blessing. Was it not in the days of Jehoshaphat that people went to fight with gold? When God is ready to lift you, men can do foolish things. Like going to war with vessels of gold. This is true. Now let me share with you just one scripture. And then we'll pray. Is someone ready to receive this morning? One of the keys of the kingdom. We have spoken about understanding. But I just want to share one key. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father who is seated on the throne. Please give me volume, Mike. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, He is seated on the throne. You are singing because your life is about to change. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen. Glory to the Father, He is seated on the throne. 
1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen, no dimension of revelation has entered this level. The idea stands for revelation. No ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. The things, that means there are things kept. A body of knowledge, the Bible calls it marvelous light. Not light, marvelous light. It is access to that body of knowledge that makes a man a chosen person. A peculiar people. What is peculiar? Their access into this body of knowledge that has been privy, kept by the Spirit. That no eye has seen, no ear has heard. It has not entered the heart of man. The things which God has prepared. Not for them that pray. Not for them that fast. For them that love him. Please keep that scripture there. It matters, my brothers and my sisters, there is a secret to commanding the jealousy of God upon a man. It's more than prayer. It's more than fasting. Are we together? There is a law that causes God to rise over a man as though unfair that can cause God to punish another man so that the person he likes can move forward. There, 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 there is a state a man can assume on earth that will make God act in a way that you need the spirit to understand him. The key is love for God. Not the desire to prosper. Not the desire to do ministry. Please listen. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might. There are many believers who do not love God. They use God to get the things they love. And the jealousy of God was designed to fight anything that takes his place in your life. Even if he's the one that gave it. Is God helping us this morning? That when you see God invest his power and glory and possibilities upon a man. Many times it is not just a product of the dissipation of spiritual energy in activities. As though that is important. Many times it is not the personal reflection of the man's ability to study the Bible. Ability to pray. Ability to fast. That there is a realm where when a man becomes a lover of God. A genuine lover of God. There are certain possibilities that are allocated for such people. And Solomon loved the Lord. That was the motivation behind everything. And God so loved the world. That was the motivation behind everything. Not and God wanted to make sure he is king. And God loved the world. Behold what manner of love he says. The father has bestowed upon us that we be called the sons of God. Love. Love is powerful. In fact, the Bible says, listen, Apostle Paul in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, he takes out time to classify the operation and the gifts of the Spirit. Mighty manifestations of power, prophecy, and all of this. And then after all, he says, behold, I show you a more excellent way. A more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love. A more excellent way of prophesying is to prophesy in love. A more excellent way of doing business is to do business in love. And there is a time that I don't know why business people have not seen it. We want to succeed, but it says love never fails. That means if I'm failing and I attach love to myself, I return back. When the Bible says love never fails, it means whoever is connected to love has been immune from failure. Did they ever teach you that in a business class? That anything plus love is the result that God puts there. Love never fails. There are not many things that the Bible says never fails. Love never fails. So when I love the Lord with all my heart, I will never fail. That even when it's obvious that I should fail, his jealousy will come. Like a, like a woman offend you and you're about to quarrel her and the husband says, what's the matter? Your wife did say, hey, so what? 
and you are saying you mean you are trivializing what your wife did well unfortunately she's my wife so we have to we have to manipulate this now in her favor my hands are tied because i married her love never fails very very powerful Ephesians 3 and verse 18 oh I wish I had time this morning we have an evening session the Bible says let's start from 17 the apostle is teaching the church in Ephesus that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and what this is the, the apostle teaching rooted and grounded in love 18 he says that ye may be able to comprehend with all the saints the width the length the depth the height 19 and to know the love of christ which surpasses knowledge so paul gives love dimensions please follow me that love is not something that is just generic it's not just an affectionate communication that love has dimensions. Please listen. I want to help us in the next five minutes and show us the systems that were allocated to loving God in a way and a manner that God can take the prayer request of another person and give to you. It's amazing how you can be planning for something and Pastor Dele will go somewhere to a mall and buy your prayer request and bring it to his wife who is not praying and says honey i just brought this for you and you see from afar and and your anger cannot change it but you are wondering do you know why there are many people who even when they are not praying their relationship with god is praying they are sleeping and their relationship is saying lord increase this person and so they see things come into their life they cannot remember praying for. I show you a secret this morning and then we will pray. These are truths that have become the foundations of my own life. Many times it is not in the vastness of knowledge. It is not in your ability to manipulate through human connections. But when the jealousy of God decides to shine on you, fearful is the man who God has vowed to see him rise. Is God helping us this morning? That in loving God, there are four dimensions, just like it is in loving any man. Please listen very carefully. The Holy Spirit just put this in my heart to share with us this morning and take a few minutes that we have. Please listen. Listen. It says the length, the breadth, the width, the height of the love of God. If you are loving God, it will require you manifesting four dimensions. And if you find yourself walking these dimensions, my brothers and my sisters, you have an understanding that will compel not just the hand of God, but the heart of God to you. The first dimension of love is called passion. Write it down. Passion. True love is expressed in passion. Passion. And pursuit is the proof of passion. Anything you are passionate about, you will unashamedly pursue. There is vulnerability in love. The unashamedness to look weak. God himself seated on the throne is not ashamed to express his love for man. It should be ego stinging for the everlasting king but he says i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness you know the bible says what is man that thou art mindful of the psalmist was perplexed and said god you've not lost your intelligence can you not just wipe this humanoid species and start another one what is it in man that keeps making you return back it's not like we ask you for forgiveness God is not ashamed to express his passion to the point that he became a second Adam. This is a very sound Bible believing church. I hope you know that Adam was not deceived. It's in the Bible. Adam fell because of love. It was the wife that was deceived. Now that the wife had fallen, the man had to follow her. The same way the second Adam was not deceived. The second, they didn't scam Jesus in heaven. 
it was intentional. Your bride, the Eve, is has already fallen. And the second Adam came willingly. It's in your Bible. So he came as proof of his love. Men don't fall because of deception. They fall because of love. Listen, are we together now? Passion. I love you, Lord. And he says, I'm watching your passion. Passion for your house. Passion for everything that is God as a reflection of love. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. It's a true prayer that I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. So when you love God, it is expressed in your passion and your desperation. That Lord, I'm not seeking you just because of money and prosperity and increase and anointing and miracles. My passion, my drive, that's what drives you. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Not just because of a conference. I wake up in the morning and I'm happy to relate with you. Number two, very quickly. The second dimension of love. He talks of the length, the breadth, the height, the width. The second dimension is called commitment. Hmm. True love is expressed not only in passion, but in commitment. Look at me. There are times when desire dies. Commitment keeps the relationship. I wish I would tell you that every time in your walk with God, it will just be rosy. It should be rosy in the end. But there are times when the journey may challenge you and your faith is busy working the things out. But at that time, you will not understand God. Like a woman looks at her husband and says, who are you now? In the last three years, you have been changing. Yet you will call her Mrs. His son name and she will still answer. That's not passion. That's commitment. The staying power. The ability to stay and remain. God is an abiding God. It's important that people abide, abide and stay and stay. That was the edge that Elisha had over the sons of the prophet. They had passion, but they did not have commitment. Commitment is tested when there is nothing favorable there. Listen very carefully. You need commitment to work with God. Because the seasons where it looks like your heavens are closed. That you have to drag yourself to the place of prayer. Have you gone to pray and you just lay down there and say, God, at least I came. Just, just, I don't know the name of what we are doing, but I'm here again. That's not the day you are rushing to say, Lord, again. Lord, I preached a message and I'm suffering for it. And I stood there expecting you like my husband to come and you seem to leave me alone. Will you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? That's the song of commitment. Will you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Ask any great man and they will tell you between his call and his manifestation. There were seasons when they didn't know the name of what God was doing. Yet they maintained that routine. I need you to know that when God is silent, there's something he's saying. You need to know that you must not talk to speak. 
that the silence of God is a voice. He's saying something. I can come to Pastor Dele's house and he looks at his wife and she goes to do something. They just communicated. But my understanding is unfruitful because I'm not part of that union. There are coded languages that are only for lovers. That when you say God, they are talking about me. Are you not hearing? And he keeps quiet. What he's saying is that I love you too much to put you in that battle. So you rest. Be still. You will not need to go around Jericho seven times. You just stay. And watch what happens. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. So when God is patient, he is not ignorant. He wants your lifting to be so justifiable before all and sundry. So he will allow the conversations to finish. Then he says, now let's go. Let me lift you regardless. Is God speaking to somebody? Everybody say commitment. There are many of you right now, probably God is talking to and those following online. You are saying, Lord, I don't know how from 2018, I don't understand you again. I used to just pray once and rent to come. Look at how you are watching them disgrace me. When you love him, you say, Lord, I don't know the name of what is happening to me. But let me tell you something. Even if you never bless me, I owe you my love forever. And God says, you are saying that to me? Say, yes, sir. And while that is happening, your landlord is knocking the door. Pastor! Stupid pastor that cannot pay rent. Your faith is not... I wonder what you are teaching your members. And you stand there. Listen. Let me tell you this. When you commit yourself to a man, it's a language our generation does not understand. The moment there is discomfort, there is an obsession for comfort and convenience. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you must, the staying power of destiny is commitment. You walk that business. You cook the food and eat it on your own, but you say this restaurant must work. It has to work. Not just two days and you say, I, I don't know why the thing is not. Mm -mm. Commitment. Number three, our time is up. The third dimension of love is pleasure. If you cry forever, it's not the will of God. It's an attack. In this kingdom, there is joy. In this kingdom, there is peace. In this kingdom, there is laughter. God laughs, men laugh. In this kingdom, there is victory. So your life cannot be a circle of pain. There has to be the pleasure factor. Is it not at his right hand that there are pleasures forevermore? Very close to him. That means that one day I should love God and the evidence should be in my life. I should be able to eat well and say, Lord, this is your doing. That Lord, you move me to this house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That Lord, you gave me this kind of husband. Thank you for allowing that one leave me. I didn't understand. But thank you. I would have made a foolish decision and I would have been crying by now. Thank you. Listen. 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 Fruitfulness is important. It's a good index for defining love. When all that happens in your life is suffering, you misunderstand God. Even your house help, not to talk of your children, that you help around. One time you can just call them and say, look, my dear, you'll be nice and faithful. Let me do something to you. Um, we are going to take you to America. They say, no, 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 no. Just, just take me to Abuja. I'm fine. Say, you are going to America. We'll make passport and take you to the U.S. And the lady says, in our life, we've not come out of our state. He said, that's it. There is pleasure. That's the reason why you shouldn't be angry when God is blessing your pastor and his wife. You see, most people have this idea. Once they see God blessing, they say, ah, must you be like this? Abba. It's a relationship. You should blame the person sending the, the, the blessings, not the ones receiving it. If I love you and you come to my house and I cook for you and someone is angry with you, is that correct? You should be angry with me. 
Everybody say pleasure. pleasure. Yes, sir. There is a pleasure dimension. So when we celebrate the miracles and the signs and the wonders, the favor and the lifting, you can return back and say, Lord, I thank you. That's why you give him pleasure too when you worship him. You see that? Yes. The last dimension of love, and then we'll pray this morning. Sacrifice. 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 The foregoing of comfort to preserve love. The foregoing of comfort to demonstrate worth is called sacrifice. I love you, Lord. I'm passionate towards you. I am committed to you. My work with you gives me pleasure and I also seek to give you pleasure. But Lord, if and when the need arises, I am willing to lay down all. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life. Listen, believers, God is speaking to us now. When you say, God, I love you, what exactly are you saying? Many people means, God, you give me so much pleasure. Please continue doing it. Many people say, God, I just got born again and I, I just am chasing after you. Others say, Lord, I'm committed though, because this thing has not worked. I've done everything. It has not worked. And yet others are saying, Lord, I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart sing lord i will bow i will bow to you to no other god but you we're wrapping up this morning service this is the key lord i will work Nothing hands has made but you. We will not be careful in this matter, O King. We have been respecting you, but now as touching our love, we are not careful to answer you. That our God, it is in our deal. Pleasure is part of the dealing. But even if there is no pleasure and it will take sacrifice, and God says you are doing this for me, Lord, I love you. You just gave me five million naira. But there is something in my spirit and I'm carrying it to your house. I'm not raising money, no. But you can drag it. And God says, what are you doing? And Solomon loved the Lord. Now you know what aspect of love that was. So you don't randomly call love, love all the times. No. There are times that love is passion. There are times that love is commitment. There are times that love is pleasure, but there are times that love is sacrifice. That's when you sing songs like, I pledge allegiance to the land. With all, do you not know the song? With all I am, I will seek to honor. I pledge Yesterday your pastor spoke to me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears about his itinerary why do we do these things listen in the last one month I've not had the opportunity to rest to truly rest Many people never know a preacher's life and the labor that comes in serving the Lord. Your pastor moves around, traveling up and down. It's not about comfort. It's love that constrains men. You have a choice and you can say, Lord, please, I'm done. What happens when you prepare a message and serve members and they look at you and say, is that all? 
that death is working in us so that life will work in others. I show you the keys that can bring a heavy dimension of grace. Fire only comes when there is sacrifice on the altar. I wish what I were saying were a lie. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, we're rounding up this morning. If it is grace you want, if it is true fire you want, if it's a life that, that is compelling, there has to be that fire. There has to be that sacrifice. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer not your spirit, your bodies. Man of God, hear me. You have been praying and say, God, please make me anointed. Why do I speak and nothing happens in the lives of the people? I bless them. Make me like Pastor Dele. It does. There are things that are not transferable. You have to dig that well by yourself. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? TBC this morning, God is speaking to us. Much less love and beauty and less world. Nothing in this world. Oh, let it not be a special number this morning. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. That's the language of lovers. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. My weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. Sheila Namasena Dadia, you're the holder of my future days. Come on, lift your hands. Let's shout out the Lord in this place. Your presence is there. All my days on earth I will love I show you a secret this morning. The moment that I see you face to face. For nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you are the cup that Yes, you are the company. Yes, you are the company. Yes, you are the company. For your glory. Just to see you, to be for your glory, I will do anything, just to see I'm rounding up right now. There is a grace that is coming upon you to seek God. This grace will begin to drive you to the secret place. And I decree and declare right now, I'm speaking by the Spirit. 
receive of that grace receive of that anointing please just help those under the anointing i stretch my hands in the name of jesus receive that anointing receive that grace receive that grace new wine new wine new wine new anointing it's time to step into a deeper level please help those under the anointing so they don't injure themselves it's an impartation, a new level of hunger, a new level of grace. From you again, again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Hey. Listen, listen. I want to pray and speak over your life. There is a grace for speed that I want to release upon your life. I want you to believe it. There is a grace that brings men into the realm of speed. I stretch my hands over the baptizing church and I stand in the name of Jesus. Step into that anointing right now. Receive that grace. Speed. Speed in your life. Speed in your destiny. Help those under the anointing. Speed. Dominion over time. Dominion over time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When Pastor Dele was up here, he made a statement. I don't know if you believed it. He said there is a grace for the prophetic. The prophetic is not about the office of the prophet. It's about an alignment with the spirit of discernment. And I'm seeing the number 11. 11 people. That grace. I stretch my hands. Where are they? Receive that grace right now. Step into that anointing. Please help that woman. Step into that anointing. That grace. Shabarakote selekate. Drink of the wine. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. You came for service this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer and then I speak over you and we are done this morning. Your pastor and his dear wife are reflections of a grace for favor. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, there was an anointing that was upon Esther. Hey guy, the keeper of the king's virgins gave her a particular ointment. He said, use it for one year. That's all it takes to secure the heart of Ahasuerus. And the Bible says, everyone that looked upon Esther favored her. People do not just help you because they want to. There are graces. I always teach that what is on you is what controls what is around you. Creation has never been disobedient. Something on you is what is instructing them. There can be a grace on a man that instructs creation to be violent towards you. Every land closes up. My head shall thou anoint like the horn of an unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. This is not just some Pentecostal jamboree. No. It is an attempt to place something upon your life. To begin to control the systems and the structures around your life. And then you will marvel and wonder and know that it does not take time. It just takes the right grace on you. 
Are we together? The last verse that the Lord gave me for this church. Psalm 44 and verse 3. We'll read it together and I pray. Psalm 3. 3. 1, 2, read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance. How did they get it? Because thou had favor unto them. Listen, let me tell you. If favor happens only once in your life, it is not favor. There's a difference between breakthrough and favor. Breakthrough brings you out of challenges to a place of rest. Favor is a system programmed by the intelligence of God that continues to recycle goodness in your life. If someone helps you once and that's all, that was not favor. You, I know we call it favor. Favor is favor when it is repeated and consistent. The actors may be different, but the operation is the same. Are we together? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all flesh. I stand in faith with Pastor Delia and his dear wife. In the name of Jesus over the baptizing church. Let the grace for favor that causes men to arise as though under an influence to provide solutions for you without conditions may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you listen in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and she loses her place immediately. The king likes a village girl. She becomes a queen immediately. Mephibosheth is loved by the king and immediately he stays in the table. Who hates you does not matter. But in the book of Esther, there was no priest. There was no man of God. There was a village girl and a king. She likes the king. The king likes her and they become queens. Your journey can be shortened by the love of one man ordained by God. The Bible says, withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within thy power. Do you think there are people in this land that is within their power to be used by God to lift you? There are people who leave your city and go down to our cities and bless us and bless other people. There is a grace. You have seen it in the life of your man of God. I pray for you. Whoever must arise in this season by the spirit of the living God and cause you and your family to enter your Sabbath experientially, I declare may that grace cause them now. Every dying business in this church in the name of Jesus, we give life to it. Everyone in this church trusting God for a job, please have the faith to believe. In the name that is above all names, I stand in faith with your dear man of God and we decree and declare, according to the time of life, I'm speaking by the Spirit, except God has not called us. I stand here and I speak to you by the God of Jeshuron, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind. Between now and the next 90 days, you return with your job. Every family under financial pressure here, I declare, was it not a raven that came to Elijah at Bucheri? There is a mystery of divine supply. I decree and I declare, may men arise right now to wipe your tears. Let me speak prophetically. 
and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic grace and I declare TPC let your spiritual borders be enlarged enlarged to a new dimension in the name of Jesus we enlarge your tents we open the two lift gates over this ministry and we cause enlargement in the name of Jesus we are all standing upon this great property in the name of Jesus we declare the ark bearers that will write off the, the financial bills for all the capital projects of this church I stand as one cent and I speak in the open I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit we prophesy to the wind we speak to the north the south the east the west of Lagos that all those who must stand and hold the hands of Pastor Dele and his dear wife in achieving these visions the errands and the halls we speak to you captains of industry we compel your compassion towards this church in the name of Jesus Christ I declare whatever is your own and has not entered your hand in this Lagos by the spirit of faith by the spirit of grace by the spirit of prophecy I stand again in agreement with the man of God please believe I release it to your hands now hallelujah Finally, every long-standing issue in your life and your family. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. Shall the captives of the mighty be delivered? He said, even the lawful captives. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion? He said, we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things. It says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity says like the streams of the Negev. I declare that every mountain that stands before anyone connected to this vision, connected to this grace, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, receive your testimony. Receive your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. And may your hunger for God step into a new dimension. Prayer fire. The grace for revelation. And your commitment in the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands. May the Lord bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God. Our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.